Hi, welcome back to another episode of Cold Stream Rod Shop. I'm Derek Fraser. In this week's episode, I'm not sure what we're going to be working on. We have three projects in the shop, and for one reason or another, we're kind of waiting, stopped on uh, the next steps. Over on the 35 Ford pickup chassis, we're waiting for the engine, the transmission, and the brake stuff to come in, which may come in in the next day or so, and we could carry on with that. Uh, over on the 40 Plymouth that we've been covering, I did get the S10 transmission back. It's all rebuilt. It's everything is good with it. However, I came across a, a complication that I guess because I'm not an expert on Chevy transmissions, my assumption, albeit wrong, was that the S10 transmission would bolt up to a regular small block Chevy uh, bell housing. Um, that may have been something I assumed or was led to believe but it's certainly not the case if you can see the bolt pattern here on this is kind of like a Ford bolt pattern versus down here on the Camaro one it's the rectangular is more out like you see on a Muncie or a Saginaw transmission so we actually do have a um, regular Chevy bell housing there that the Camaro T5 would hook up to so we're going to change course on this one, I think, um, because the issue with the transmission before was that the Camaro transmission had the shifter all the way at the back. Uh, the desirability of the S10 transmission was that the shifter was forward. Now, a couple people have reached out to me on Instagram and uh, through Facebook and said, well, why don't you just take a tail shaft off of an S10 and the shifter and the top and swap it out onto the Camaro because the Camaro T5 transmission is a little stronger. That looks like the way we're going to have to go right now. So I was speaking to uh, a person that's been watching our videos this morning. He dropped by and said, oh yeah, I've got a few S10 transmissions. You more than likely can get a tail housing and a shifter and the top plate for me. So we're going to go check that out tomorrow. If I can actually get that the top and the tail shaft housing, what I'll do is I'll actually swap that one out and clean it up and put it on the Camaro. And then we're going to have a perfectly good and perfectly <laughs> reconditioned um, S10 transmission that we'll probably put for sale. So long and short, that's kind of where we are with putting the engine and the transmission in the Plymouth. The other third option that I might be working on is on our 32 Roadster. We have a 292 Y block in it. Um, it was out of a running truck at the time, but I've never actually taken the heads off to kind of see where we are, what we're gonna have to rebuild onto it. So I might do some investigative work on this engine to see how much there will be to um, out of rebuilding it. Ideally, you know, if it's got low miles onto it, we might be able to re-ring and put new bearings into it. Um, if not, we'll probably have to get it bored out. Uh, but until I take the heads off, take a good look at it, don't really know. And the other thing I could work on too is actually start working on the firewall, finish the firewall off so it meets up with the engine. So those are pretty much my three options to work on this week. Um, normally I know exactly what I'm working on, but there's a few things we're waiting on to come in here and a couple priorities. So anyways, follow along and see what we go to work on. So it looks like the first thing we're going to do is work on a transmission for the 40 Plymouth. Here is the fully rebuilt uh, Camaro, S, Camaro T5 transmission that we've been talking about uh, with the shifter, you know, at the back of the transmission. Um, what our approach had been before was to get an S10 transmission rebuilt, and we did. But unfortunately, I did not know that the bolt pattern on the back of the transmission, um, oh, sorry. Uh, didn't mate up with the regular small block Chevy transmission. So we are reversing course and right now what I've done is um, with the help of a YouTube viewer and a fellow car enthusiast, uh, Charlie Dalrymple, um, he gave me this S10 transmission that uh, was blown up or kind of disintegrated inside. So I've got um, the shifter cover on the top here that we're gonna use as a donor that I'm that I'm going to clean up and then over here I've got an S10 tail shaft that we're going to clean up like we did in a previous video for the S10 but now we've we've got we've got this one um, the plan is to put that 
on the back of the Camaro T5. Now, a few viewers and a few Instagram folks have reached out to me and said, this is a common thing to do. Watched a couple of YouTube videos, including a well done one done by Speedway Motors about how to do this. So should be simple, should be straightforward. We're gonna see, I'm going to attempt it this afternoon. And then of course the bell housing here, um, you can't quite see it here. So if I were to go like that, that's how it would hook up to the engine. Um, and then you see that the Camaro transmission is rotated somewhere around 17 degrees. So over here, I've got a brand new uh, Chevy small block Chevy, uh, small block Chevy. Uh, aluminum bell housing that I got off of Amazon, including the fork, uh, throw up bearing, and I've got a slave cylinder here in the box. So we're all set up. No, oops, sorry. We're going to uh, start by cleaning this tail shaft up and then cleaning the cover up, trying to get all all ready to go and then look for any seals or something that I might need and uh, kind of go for it. As I said at the beginning of the video, we've got a few things to work on this week and we've had a bunch of curveballs. So I have another one. Um, so I took the uh, bell housing off of the Camaro T5. Um, it was on there pretty good. Um, but unfortunately, what I have is this situation here. I'm hoping that you can see it. Um, when this thing was rebuilt, it looked as though they cracked a piece of the uh, aluminum off here. And if you look really closely there, you can see that right here where they must have hit it with a wrench or something, there's a crack propagating here. And across the top, there's a, pro a crack propagating there. And you can clearly see that there's actually paint in those cracks. So this happened prior to us getting this transmission. And then here on the back, um, you can see that there's a crack right there. So and it goes down. So I'm not sure if we want to use this as is or not. So we're going to take it to my transmission guy tomorrow, get his opinion. He's been at it a very long time. He'll tell us uh, if we can use it as is, if we should, you know, disassemble it or get it TIG welded, like v out and TIG welded. Worst case scenario, I actually think we have a donor case here that Charlie gave us. Um, it looks like it might be good. I mean, the guts are gone inside. Some gears are chewed up, so uh, quite possibly, if we need another case, I will see if this can be stripped and salvaged and, and used as a good case. Um, anyways, more to come on this saga, if you want to call it that. So now I'm going to have to switch gears and probably work on something else. I think what we'll do is now we're going to probably take the heads off the Y block and see what's going on inside. Um, also yesterday uh, when I visited Charlie, he was nice enough to give me this Y block four barrel intake manifold carburetor and a set of old school chrome valve covers to come for the, come for the Y block, um, which is really cool. I mean, we do have the three two barrel set up on there um, that we were going to go with, but it's nice to have an option to go with a four barrel. Um, either way, um, it's cool. We picked up some more parts. So let's see what's next. Well, I've got the valve covers off so far. Um, and when I look at the engine itself, the uh, it kind of reminds me of pulling apart some of the old flatheads. There's a lot of carbon built up here. Um, doesn't look too seriously. It flakes off. I took the spark plugs out. It was supposed to be a running engine, um, came out of a 1964 F100, a little bit of carbon on the spark plugs, but it, there's nothing, like there's no massive carbon buildup or there's nothing really super nasty that would lead me to believe there's just something wrong with the engine. Um, my first impression so far is that this engine most likely has not been rebuilt. Um, just because, you know, the, it's probably that's probably its life use of uh, oil and carbon buildup and sludge inside of it. But nevertheless, I'm gonna carry on here. In order to get the heads off, we've got to take the rocker arm assembly off first. Anybody has a Y block, they would probably know that better than I would, but um, we'll take the rocker arm assembly off so that we can access all the head bolts. And then we're gonna take the heads off and um, see what the cylinders look like. 
So I've got both sets of heads off now on the Y block. Um, the bores look really nice. Um, there's no scratches, there's no gouges into it, there's no rust into it. A lot of carbon built up on the inside, but this is an old engine. Um, when I put the dial bores on it, we are, I don't know if I can, hopefully I can show that we are running down the cylinders. We're running over a thou or two over, but as we get to the, the top of the cylinder, um, here, we'll try that on the other side here. At the top of the cylinder, we're running about 10 thou, 10 to 11 thou over. Down on the bores, in the center of the bores, we're right on, but um, kind of looking like the engine will have to get bored out. Um, good candidate for it. Everything turns freely. So right now, it was just kind of an exploratory thing with the engine, just to make sure that, at least at this part of it, I mean, ultimately we'll have to take the oil pan off and check the, the crank and whatnot. But I mean, every indication so far um, is that this is a, a rebuildable engine. The heads, they're truck heads. There's nothing really special about them, but um, there's no obvious cracks or leaks or anything like that. Still need to get them cleaned and Magnaflux, but again, um, everything's looking good so far to rebuild this 292 wide block. So for now, I mock the engine back together again. Previously, I had a three two barrel intake manifold on it uh, with one single carburetor sitting in the center looking kind of funny. Um, for now though, I picked up this intake manifold and carburetor from um, a gentleman I met at the car show and he's also watches our YouTube channel all the time. What this is, little did I know, is a 312 four barrel intake manifold, which apparently is quite desirable for Wybok people. I, actually kind of like it. I kind of like the look of this. So I think what we're going to do, we may shift gears when we're building this and just stick to just a four barrel intake um, and four barrel on the Y block once it's rebuilt. So because I can't quite get at some of the other projects, I'll explain later, um, I'm going to carry on working on the 32 Roadster. One thing we needed to do was the firewall that I got it was an original 32 firewall. It had been cut up in a previous life. But that didn't matter because like I was going to have to either bend the firewall down or create something for it so that it would fit in the car with the engine in it. So what I've done so far is while the firewall was in the car, I made up this cardboard template like this of the piece that I need to weld in here flat. So I'm in the process now. I'm going to cut a piece of this out and then come from behind here and basically weld this so it's flat going down to the feet. And then what I'll do on the outside, I may build up these side pieces a little bit just to make them kind of neat and then fill up all the different holes onto it. So that's what I'm gonna to do to carry on with the 32 Roadster. Oh, and another thing I'm hoping to get to is it's kind of just floundering array down there. There's a uh, master, cyl master cylinder and pedal kit that I'm going to have to sort out and get in place there. So hopefully we'll get those two things done on this episode. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, I wasn't quite sure what the theme of the episode was going to be. And it was pretty much kind of flying by the seat of my pants on each project because we had delays and parts and different things going on. So I'm going to give you an update of where we are on the 35 Ford pickup. The plan has changed slightly. The owner actually wants to take the chassis now, go get it painted, and then put the engine in it later. He did ask me to put the original pedal into it, put the master cylinder some lines into it. That shouldn't take me too long. Covered that four or five times. Um, probably we'll just get it done and show you what we did for it. The pedal operation is not going to be like the bell crank like we had before. The original pedal actually comes down and it'll push a rod straight back. So it's really kind of a, should be straightforward. And then the 40 Plymouth Saga. Um, nothing but bad news on this one as far as the transmission goes. Um, as I've been talking about, we had bought an S10 transmission perfectly good core from the gentleman I bought it from, rebuilt it, 
went really well. Um, but our difficulty was is that S10 transmission didn't have the same like Muncie t uh, style bolt pattern to bolt up to a bell housing. So we kind of shelved that and then what we I had talked about was essentially taking the Camaro transmission which the, my, the friend of ours for the 40 Plymouth he bought it a few years ago. He paid $3,500 for the transmission clutch and everything and it was re fully rebuilt and upgraded and basically ready to go. Um, what we were going to do is do a simple tail shaft move to put the S10 tail shaft onto it to move the shifter forward. If you YouTube that you're going to find all kinds of videos of how relatively simple it is to do. It takes about an hour or so to do. Um, pretty straightforward. So I took the transmission off of the bell housing and I think I showed you earlier in this episode the tab was cracked. Um, so here's here's another donor one. So basically this tab here was cracked all the way through. Somebody had done a, a terrible job taking it apart. So I took that transmission up to my transmission rebuilder, um, older gentleman. Um, he took it apart and looked inside and basically it's a pile of crap. Um, somebody did a rattle can paint job rebuild on the transmission. Um, the thrust bearing was, there was no new parts in it whatsoever. Um, and a couple of the parts like third gear, the lay shaft and the input shaft, garbage. Um, the transmission guy said he would not put them back in the transmission because they were that bad. So for $3,500 um, he bought a piece of crap. So we're back to square one. So what we're going to do, um, there are a couple pieces that are in that transmission that are good. I mean, he got basically screwed um, as far as that transmission went. So we are going to, this is a good tail shop. This is a good case. We're going to clean this up. Um, the transmission guy has some parts. He's going to go buy some new parts. So we're going to build a new transmission for him. So it's going to be a couple more weeks before we can get all that, get the transmission into it and get it on here. But I guess you got to be buyer beware when you're buying stuff off Kijiji. Sometimes, I think most of the time people are honest, but once in a while you get bit. And unfortunately, um, the gentleman that owns this got bit really hard and it really sucks. Um, so more on that uh, probably in a future episode, but we're just going to focus, I guess for now, working on the 32 Roadster. Hopefully you can see from the time-lapse video uh, what I did. I did a couple things with the plasma cutter, one of which I cut this access port here for uh, 39 to 40 pedals. Uh, this is a 35 frame, so it didn't have juice brakes back in those days, but I got a set of 39 Ford pedals here um, that are going to hook up the juice brakes uh, or hydraulic brakes. The other thing I have to do is that I need to adapt a modern master cylinder here to go on the back of this bracket. So the back of the bracket is set up for the old uh, small hydraulic uh, master cylinders. So I've been over at the bench uh, drilling plates and uh, doing it the hard way. I guess if I had a plasma cutter and a CAD program or something I could probably make this up or a milling machine but so far this is what I've come up with. So this I'm going to weld the two pieces Sorry, I'm going to weld the two pieces together, replace those bolts with studs, and then ultimately that is going to go on the back of here, and which will allow us to bolt on the Ford Master Cylinder. I'm also going to have to probably notch the side of this frame a little bit in order for the Master Cylinder to uh, clear some. I think I need to just 
open this one particular hole up. So I already kind of trial fitted in there and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna carry on with this. Um, like I said at the beginning of the episode and I said a couple more times, this episode is more or less, uh, things are changing quickly. It just happens to be that uh, people's plans change. We have to adjust accordingly. So I'm trying to finish the 35 Ford frame so that it can go out later today. Uh, last night, as you can see there, um, another 32 Ford frame came in with a lot of parts, which that will ultimately be for the uh, International Roadster, I guess, as we called it. Uh, we will be starting that up probably next week or the following week. So the 35 frame, trying to finish that up to get it out to make room for the 32 frame. Um, and then I was working on our 32 firewall. I did manage to get a piece of metal cut um, on the plasma cutter. So I have to clean that metal up and get that ready to weld in. I'm not gonna promise I'm gonna get it done in this episode because right now the focus is on getting the pedals on the 35 frame, running the brake lines so the, uh, the gentleman that owns it can take it away today. So there's the brake pedal in place right now. The clevis pin is in, the adjustment is in. We've run the brake lines um, to the back and basically run out of time here. Um, right now, due to scheduling reasons, we are going to move this one out. It's gonna go back to the gentleman who owns it and he's gonna paint the chassis and put the cab on and um, put the rest of the brakes on the front. So that's it for the 35 Ford pickup for now. I'm not saying it won't come back later. Uh, lots more work to come for old Ford chassis from this gentleman. And uh, on to the next project this week.
As you can see from the time lapse video there a couple seconds ago, I was welding in the sides here to fill in the original um, firewall. What we did was we put a flat piece of uh, 16 gauge sheet metal across the back and we're just trying to use as much of the original firewall as possible. I also want to keep as much space there. Um, I mean, I could probably have built this section up more like it looks like an original 32 firewall, but I know I'm going to have headers going down there, I'm going to have the steering column come through, and I'm going to have a brake pedal stuck there. So I, I need as much real estate as possible. Um, also, just didn't want to have a perfectly flat firewall there. I, I don't like that. I like as much of the original as possible. And given that this original firewall was cut up so much, I don't feel bad kind of just like leaving it and putting some flat sheet metal there. Um, it's just kind of rough welded right now. Uh, I've got to come and fill in a few pieces here, fill in these holes and these holes. Now, this hole, this hole, and this hole, and then on the, the other side, those correspond with where the original gauge tunnel goes. I'm probably just going to put some bolts in there or some screws in there to make it look like an original. Um, and as well, these small holes here, those are for brackets that hold the radio. Let's do that again. I was out of focus, sorry. Those holes there are for holding the radiator support brackets. Um, this, this hole needs to be filled. This one, this one, this one and a bunch of these from the outside. So I'm gonna keep on working along with that, try and push this up until the video dateline, uh, video deadline time comes um, and see uh, how much we can get done here. Here we are, uh, I've got most of the holes all welded shut. I left, like I said, some of the holes for the original um, gauge tunnel because um, I wanna basically put nuts and bolts in there and make it look like it's more kind of an original well, it is an original firewall, but I don't want to weld too much up and have it too smooth because we're not going for the, you know, the total smoothed out look kind of thing. So sides are all welded in place. The, the panels on here, there's a little bit of warpage into it, but I think the, the firewall feet actually flex a little bit. So far, I've got to bolt it bolted down to the frame when some of that's come out. Uh, one of the things I was going to try and get finished for this video, as I said, this week's video was all about everything and nothing about any one particular thing, but we actually got some stuff done here on the, uh, the 32 Roadster. So on the inside, I started making this flange. Um, not happy with the angle, but I mean, I got the shape and everything. So the intention would be to place that behind there to allow the, the tunnel to come up against it. Um, so I'll work on that on another episode. But for this one, um, we have basically the firewall kind of reconstructed. Uh, we know that this is a good rebuildable 292. Um, since us filming taking the heads off, I think we actually got a line on a rebuilt 292 or a refreshed 292 that we may actually get instead. But we'll see how that goes and we'll update you. But we're going to keep on working on this 32 Roadster, ours, on and off. And then next to us, there's going to be a, an original 32 Roadster we're going to put together and start filming for next week. So that's it for this one. We're a little bit all over the place with everything we're doing, but we got some stuff done this week. So just showing you where we are. Hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. Please like, share, tag, subscribe, and of course, send me your comments and your questions, and I'd be glad to hear from you. Everybody take care and have a great week.